Mark. Welcome to part two of my resolution video for chronic air bubbles in the Aldi heaters installed in tab trailers. Um, a lot of you that have um, tab trailers with the Aldi heaters installed in them have chronic problems with air bubbles in this loop, even though there's a drain here, uh, air bleed here, and an automatic air bleed here. If you haven't seen video number one, go and see it now so that you fully understand the issue that's going on. So I don't want to go and backtrack through all of that. But in my trailer, the problem is that this air bleed has been mounted on an angle, on a 45 degree angle, as opposed to being uh, horizontal and vertical. It's supposed to be in this position. Um, now, I've done a lot of engineering and a lot of work, and in a nutshell, here's what's going on. I have my Aldi heater here. I have a radiator here, and the lines to the radiator hook here. Um, right here is a separator, right, between two... Um, this is one bay of underneath my seats, and this is another bay. And the, the heater line that comes down, comes out of here, they've got that line pointed at a 45 degree angle so they can get to a channel here, and then they come up and they connect here. So this is what they're doing with those lines. This is why they've had to install that line at a 45 degree angle, because you can see that if I put this at a horizontal, it's going to kink here, it's going to kink here. So what I'm going to do in a nutshell is I'm going to drill a hole right there, about an inch and a half inch hole, and I'm going to go straight across right to the top of that radiator. So my line won't go up and down like this. It'll go straight across. And that'll be nice in that I won't trap air here in the first place, right? The problem with the Aldi systems as New Campus installed them is there's lots of this going on, up and down and up and down. Uh, from a radiator down underneath the paneling to the next radiator down underneath the paneling. And so you can get air trapped in each one of these places each one of these along here. Um, this is going to get rid of one of those main problems. By not going down at a 45 degree angle, by putting a hole in here and running a hose from this point directly here, I get rid of this whole bottom loop here. It'll be straight a straight run. So that's the number one thing I'm going to do. But while I was at it, I was thinking, you know, it would be nice to know if I make this repair, if I get rid of the air bubbles. Well, here's my super secret weapon. This is 7 8 inch inside diameter, which is 22 millimeters, silicone heater hose. And the nice feature about this, it's clear. It's got, um, the lighting's kind of funny here. It's got um, reinforcement going every way, but you can see that's clear. And with a flashlight behind it, I'll be able to see... I'll be able to actually see if I've got air bubbles in there or not. Um, super simple idea, right? Um, get the get the automatic air blade mounted like it should be. Get rid of this big loop here and put a section of clear silicone hose in here. 
um, so that I can see if the air bubbles are moving through it. The fluid is green, the air bubbles will be clear. I should, by putting a flashlight behind it, I should be able to see those bubbles moving through here, if I have then any at all. The nice thing about this stuff, this is amazing stuff. It's expensive per foot, but it's got a I mean, it's got a four inch turning radius. You can see that it is super flexible and doesn't kink. So what we're going to do, is going to head out to the trailer. We're going to um, drain the uh, glycol, which is really simple since I put in my new drains <laughs> right there where it needs to be. I'll drain the glycol out. I will drill a hole. I will cut the old hose, put this in its place. Move this air bleed valve horizontal and we're good to go. So let's get at it. Okay, welcome back. This is by Aldi installation in my 2015 Max S trailer. Um, this is, there is the issue with my uh, automatic bleed valve not being mounted correctly. You can see how it's down at a, 40, at a 45 degree angle. That hose is supposed to be up in this clip. So what I'm going to do, let me see if I can get this camera right, it's kind of weird. I'm going to, you can see how that hose, that hose goes down, down, and then comes back up to this line on my radiator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the radiator here, directly across the top, right through a hole here and directly so that this this hose instead of driving down and going down there and coming back up this hose will go directly straight across into the radiator much much simpler so i'm going to go ahead and measure and drill that hole and we'll get at it i'm also going to drain the aldi um Nice thing is, is I've got a drain right here, <laughs> which is going to be slick. All I have to do is just open that valve, catch that liquid, um, put it in a clean, very clean container, and in that way I can reuse it. I don't have to worry about um, putting new Aldi in here. I've just replaced this uh, fluid um, maybe about a week ago, so I want to definitely save that liquid. So I'll drain it out of there. Um, that'll drain this guy and that radiator just fine. Um, and we'll go at it. So let me drain that. We'll uh, make some measurements and cut a hole. Okay, I have See the it. Aldi system drained. This is a Forstner bit, just a little bit larger than the diameter of that hose. I've marked my location where I'm gonna drill. Let's get at it. So I've got that hole drilled right there. It'll run right across here and connect right to that radiator. So I'm gonna take this box off pocket screws here, 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 and here, and that box will come off. That'll give me good access to those hose clamps. Okay, I have that box off, and um, there's the radiator, and there's my hose clamps. So I'm going to go ahead and take those clamps off and reroute the hoses. Okay, I have the radiator hoses off of my aluminum radiator. You can see I've got, oh, I don't know, wouldn't call that much corrosion. It's more of a, it's still smooth. It's uh, more of tarnishing, but uh, that's, uh, if I were having problems with old antifreeze or um, electrolytic or galvanic or acidic corrosion going on, that's where it would start. You can see, get just a little bit of dark here, but it's still smooth, so we're good. Before we put the new hoses on, clean that up really good. to reroute my hoses. Um, this is the kind of cutter, just wanted to show you, this is the kind of cutter you want to use with this hose. So I've got the bottom one back on. I've rerouted it. My hoses originally came over the top of all these wires and stuff and I didn't like that because it made high spots and low spots. The hose went up and down as it went over here. So by running it underneath directly on the floor, it's a nice straight line. So I just moved these cables on top of that hose. And that's the moment of truth. There's the, you see the angle that that was put on? Look at this. Look at that. See that? It's right up where it's supposed to be. That's how that guy's supposed to be mounted. 
really, really nice. That will make this uh, bleed tube, the automatic air bleeder work right um, because the float will be able to work in there. Excellent, so now we're gonna go ahead and run our new hose. There's my new hose. Runs straight across and down. So that um, air bleed will be at the highest point. It won't be down, swooping down like that. Nice. So the next thing you need to do is this drain line here. That's um, When this air bleeder starts bleeding out air, it can in some cases let a little bit of uh, fluid out, just a little bit, when the bubble, when before the float comes up, you can get a little bit of fluid out. But they've got this, this hose routed really poorly. So I'm gonna take that hose off. I'm gonna route it the way it should go. It shouldn't be all wrapped up like this because um, you can pinch and stuff. So let's fix that while we're at okay, it. Okay, so there is how that air bleed line is supposed to run. Nice, not all coiled up in the back there, um, but just straight down like it needs to be. Much, much neater. I'm gonna put some tie wraps on the rest of this stuff. Put the cover back on here. Covers back on. These are the pieces of foam. If you haven't seen my video on fixing hot, hot storage here in a new camp trailer, um, you should you should read you should go and watch that. Um, there's a video on how to pack foam in there that keeps the heat from the radiator from overheating these spaces in here. So you can use this for storage and not get things too hot. But um, just packing in foam around the edges so it keeps the hot air in where it needs to be. Go ahead and watch That's that video. It. We've got the reservoir topped up, all good to go. There's the new line. You can see how the line is green. Real cool thing, if I put a flashlight behind this and turn it up, you can see, well you can't see on the camera because we've got a lot of flicker here, but um, you can see as I was filling it, little bubbles moving through and now we don't have any more bubbles moving through. <laughs> it's really awesome. It's very nice to be able to see directly into that pipe. The nice thing is, this pipe is the absolute highest thing by about a half inch of anything else in, in here. It's actually about a half inch higher than the, um, than the back, end, uh, um, back end radiator. And the reservoir is about four inches higher, but it's also an air, you know, let air out right through the uh, top of the reservoir. So this is really nice. The fact that um, I've got my air bleed mounted vertical, yay! And I can see into my host. If I've got any air in there, I'll see it right here. So I know that that uh, bleed is working. Anyway, guys, you guys so had uh, some inspiration from this. If you're having any trouble with um, air in your lines and that guy's on, on wrong, this might help you um, get straight. Anyway, take care. We'll see you on the way.